Now before we go on with system voltages and transformer readings, there's one form of math that I want you to particularly understand and know it well, and that's the rate triangles. As we go on in the program, you're going to see there's a lot of application of rate triangles to our system voltages and transformers. Uh, we'll use it in power factor. There's a lot of practical application of rate triangles in just many things uh, on the job. And as we go on in the program, you'll be using right triangles time and time again. My explanation that I'll give you shortly on three-phase systems, I'll use a right triangle. Now, any triangle has angles that will add up to be 180 degrees. A right triangle has one of those angles at a value of 90 degrees. In other words, it's a right triangle. It's at right angles. The sides are at right angles to one another. The longest side of that right triangle is called the hypotenuse. This would be the hypotenuse of that right triangle. Now, we said that all angles will add up to be 180 degrees. If this happened to be 30 degrees, then this would have to be 60 degrees up here to add up to be 180 degrees. Now, the hypotenuse, another way to explain that, is the side opposite your 90 degree angle. That's probably another, probably more simpler way of defining the hypotenuse of a, of a right triangle. Now, there's three ways that we can solve this right triangle. The simplest and probably the least accurate would be to uh, use graph paper and let so many inches represent so many pounds, feet, amps, whatever the case might be. Then what you would do is graphically draw it on your paper. Draw in the sides, whatever the case might be. Draw in the sides then plot it out, then measure, you see, measure your hypotenuse if that's what you're looking for, and, uh, and then convert it back again to inches, in, in other words, measure it in inches and then come back to your pounds, feet, or amps, or whatever the case might be. Now, there's, there's the graphic method. There's also another method that we would use, and that would be the Pythagorean theorem. Now, that's a mathematical way of solving a right triangle. The relationship of a right triangle is always going to be 3, 4, 5. It can be any combination you see in between, but it's going to, it's going to be in a relationship of 3, 4, 5. For example, if this was 3, this was 4, that would be 5. Okay, now... Let me, let me give you a formula that you would use for solving for a side, of one particular side, of the right triangle. Now, we'll identify this side as R. We'll identify this one as X. And we'll identify the hypotenuse as Z. Now, in school, you maybe use A, B, C. Uh, we use X, R, and Z. Because you'll see when we get into impedance and power factors of circuits and so on, that if I have a reactive load and a true or a real load, I'll add them by the right triangle method. My total opposition to current flow would be my impedance. And if I had a series circuit where I add opposition to current flow, we went through series circuit, I would add them by the right triangle method if I had reactance and resistance in that circuit. In other words, my total opposition to current flow would be this hypotenuse of that right triangle. And the symbol for impedance is Z. So now, you don't have to understand this, of course, at this time, but the thing is, the symbols and the placement of those symbols on that right triangle will be used at a later date. You'll be more accustomed now to referring to the hypotenuse as the and you'll 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 be applying it as such now there's a formula for a right triangle and that formula comes from the pythagorean theorem now the pythagorean theorem states now there's just a formula for a right triangle now that the hypotenuse squared 
and my pen dries out if I talk too much. My hypotenuse squared is equal to the sums of the squares of the other two sides, or r squared plus x squared. Now that's a formula for a right triangle. It's not a formula for a specific side as such, but if we use the algebra that you learned the first year, we can isolate every variable out of that particular uh, formula. Now, we have z squared. If I want the formula for the hypotenuse of that right triangle, I would have to take the square root of z. In other words, I would have the square root of z squared is equal to the square root of r squared plus x squared. Then I would have then z then is equal to the square root of r squared plus x squared. Okay, now that's the formula for for uh, for our hypotenuse of that right triangle, which states that if I plug in now r, if I plug in here, you see, I would have then r now, which has a value of four. 4 times 4 is 16, plus 3 times 3, which is 9, or the square root of 25, which is equal to 5. And, of course, we just stated that if I, it's always going to be a ratio of 3, 4, 5. Okay. Now, now let's, let's, let's go back to the original formula using our algebra now and then isolate r from our formula. Now you'll see, or you remember that whatever I do to one side of the equation, I have to do to the other, and that's what we learned in our, in our, uh, in our algebra. Uh, you'll see that if I want r by itself, I would have to subtract x from both sides. Now that means then I'll have z squared minus x squared is equal to r squared plus x squared minus x squared. Now you see I'm not changing, I'm not changing uh, the relationship of this equality. In other words, I'm putting a minus x squared on either side. What I'm doing over here is I'm canceling this x on that side and I'll transpose these two values. Now you'll see I have r then squared is equal to z squared minus x squared. Now you see if I want r instead of r squared, I'd take square root of both sides. Then I have then r then is equal to z squared minus x squared. So you can see what we've done now is we've also now isolated r out of that equation. Remember, this is a Pythagorean theorem. It's a formula for a right triangle. It isn't a formula for a specific side. To get a specific side, I had to use my algebra, isolate the variable you see that I want. So really, all you have to do is memorize this Pythagorean theorem here, and then know your algebra, and you've got three equations. It all depends on what's given to you and which value you want to find, you see. Okay? Now, let's do the same thing for, uh, for x. We want to isolate x by itself. Um, to do that, I'd have to have a minus r on either side. And have z squared minus r squared is equal to r squared plus x squared minus r squared. And if I do that... Then I'll cancel my r's over here and I'll transpose x now. I'll have x squared then is equal to z squared minus r squared, square root of both sides. Now my new formula is x is equal to the square root of z squared minus r squared. So now we've, we've come up with all three formulas. Okay, now the three formulas that we've gained from this Pythagorean theorem is that z squared, whoop, z is equal to the square root of r squared plus x squared. r is equal to the square root of z squared minus x squared. 
or x is equal to the square root of z squared minus r squared. Those would be the three formulas that we'll, we will use as we go on in our program. Now let's go on in our program.